Welcome to the Charles Michael Hour. I'm your host, Charles Michael, and uh, we're back with none other than Kukwa Quinny, as as she, as she prefers her name to be pronounced. It's a stutter, you see. Kukwa 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 Quinny. It's like it's like a stutter. Kukwa Quinny. Yeah. Well, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh. Pretty uneventful day today. I have switched meds recently, and that's been making me pretty EP. But Mm -hmm. yeah, as it does. Well, um, I hope that goes well. And uh, I suppose I had an uneventful day as well. I woke up around noon and just animated all day. (laughs) You know. Hard. But yeah. Um, For the previous installment of this podcast, I talked a lot. It was both of us here. I talked a lot. So um, I think I want you to to talk a little bit. And, you know, as we did with as we did with Rhinos two episodes earlier, I got Quinny to give me five songs that she wants to play on this podcast. And uh, we're going to listen to them. And I've heard a few of them already. So. But, um, yeah, tell me a little about yourself. Yeah, so, uh, I'm Quinny. Uh, I go by she, her pronouns. Um, uh, I like music. I'm a big music fan. Uh, have been getting into the making music side of music, and that's been a fun experience. And yeah. Nice. As me. So, so you do hyper pop like the rest of them? <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a bit of a hyper popper. Um, right now, uh, I really only know how to make some sort of like fucking. I I can do a lot of lead sounds, but I can only do trap drums. So that and kind of limits whatever genre I'm making to something trap. So that's always fun. Mm. I have to give you some different samples for drums then, <laughs> but um, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to keep talking, or do you want to get into the first song? Uh, let's get let's get right into the first song. I think. All right. So, the first song that we've queued up is "Sticks and Rocks" by Blissom featuring Vi Five Thousand. Um, both of which are artists that I've featured on this podcast before. So, um, I guess to introduce this song a little, I kind of want you to talk to me about, you know, um, where and when you first heard the song, you know, and since you know Blissom and Vi 5000, as do I, um, you know, talk a little about them, (laughs) you know. Yeah. Um, so I first heard the song before it was officially released my first memory of it being heard was during a um you you, uh url fest on uh, april 1st um called fool's fest um and this was during access granted access granted set um where they proceeded to play this song and then about halfway through would say something along the lines of what did she just say let's run the shit back um, for like 10 minutes, so that was a good first experience, and you set it on the right foot for me. Mm. Um, and then it officially came out three days later on April 4th, I believe. Um, and it's overall, a uh, very good, oh, April 3rd. April um, 4th. Or 4th. Yeah. Uh, but overall, uh, it's a very good song, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I, I've been streaming the shit out of it a bunch. This is the first single off of Blissom's album, Alem, or Alem, or Alem, a lot of different pronunciations. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's pretty significant to me in that front, uh, just because it's like one of my favorite like projects by Blissom. Um, and also, like this was the first single off it, and I started out really liking it, and sort of, like, has very much, like, influenced the style of, uh, music I want to make. Okay, and let's hear it. Alright. 
Sticks and Rocks by Blissom featuring Vi5000. That was Sticks and Rocks by Blissom featuring Vi5000. And, um. <laughs> Sorry I repeated you there, but I. You know. Um, You're good. Yeah, I, I. I have heard that one before. Um. Eight days after it came out, and, uh. Uh. I did congratulate Vi on, uh. On its release, um, you know, ever since 
those episodes with Rhinos, you know, Vi and Blissom and a few of the other artists that we're going to play um, have become great friends of mine, actually, so I'm quite happy about that. And um, so I'm quite pleased of its inclusion in this particular um, podcast. Now, um, let's do a word association piece. I'm going to give you 20 words, and for each word, you have to say the first word that pops into your head once I say the word. Um, so, for example, okay. for example, um, someone might say chair, and I say table. You know that that's that's how word association works. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bedroom. Bed. Books. Shelf. Candle. Match. Dreams. Nightmares. Games. Computer. Interesting. Neat. January. February. Love. Hate. Monday. Who's there? Music. Art. Offend. Rude. People. Cool. Pineapple. Pizza. Plug. Weed. <laughs> Research. Paper. Rut. French. Schedule. Meeting. Travel. Time. Video. Game. War. Bad. I'm quite pleased that you associate pineapple with pizza. What do you think about pineapple pizza? Pineapple pizza, it's pretty good, in my opinion. I don't understand yes. why people are like, ew, that's so gross. It's like, it's, ju it's just the topping on pizza. It's really not that <laughs> deep. I know it's 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 like Hawaiian pizza. It's just ham and pineapple on on that on the on the pizza. It's great, you know. It's like one of my favorite kinds of pizza. It's great. You know, it's it's up there for me. It's pretty good. I think it, it it you know, there there really shouldn't be a stigma attached to foods. In fact, I think there should be a stigma attached to. Uh, not liking pineapple pizza and gatekeeping pizza in that True. way like like because you're, you're like putting, you're putting pineapple it, 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 on to me pizza, it very much you know, you know it very much feels like um a child hearing the word eat your fruit and then get a, getting upset well you just haven't eaten your fruit then quinny <laughs> well i have because i like pineapple pizza mm. And getting upset about it is what that's equivalent to. Um, actually, pineapple's a legume, but not a fruit. <laughs> I saw. Anyways, um, interesting. You associated dreams with nightmares, and you associated plug with Wii, as in Nintendo Wii, I assume? Wii. No, I'm, I said weed. Weed. Oh, as in marijuana. Okay, weed. now I have to put a disclaimer. Yeah. We don't actually, you know, officially we don't condone drug usage, but we're going to have an open and honest discussion about it. <laughs> maybe not it to to length. Maybe we'll just mention it here and there, but yeah, good legal clarifier thing. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, good word association. Um, yeah, word associations are fun. Like, uh, I don't have to do them very often when I do it. I usually just have fun thinking of words. Okay, you do it to me then. I'll count to 20. Fuck. Issue is, I can't think of words. Goddamn. Uh, okay. I gotta put my brain on focus mode. Record. Audio. Release. Album. Art. Beautiful. Internet. Information. Table. Chair. <laughs> Plateau. Now I have to look up what that is. Like, on a mountain, like, the flat part. Like, when a mountain just, like, flattens out. Grand Canyon. 
glass. Shatter. Uh, wind. Singing. I've already lost count. Uh, but that's uh, eight. That's eight. Okay. Car. Pollution. Mystery. Solve. Talk. Conversation. Date. Time. Hallway. Walking. Key. Lock. Bowl. Spoon. Time. Watch. Numbers. Letters. You're on 17 now, so you only got three left. I had two, three more to go. Mm, music. Beautiful. Friends. Awesome. End. Beginning. All right, that's 20. Yeah, that's 20. Um, now I'm going to have to edit this for uh, awkward silence purposes. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything fault. you noticed? <laughs> it's fine. We got through it. Anything you noticed? Uh, like, for my answers or yours? Or both? From mine. I'm, I'm supposed to analyze yours. You're supposed to analyze mine. Okay. Uh, art is cool. Uh, that's what I've gathered. Um. Well, I said I said beautiful. I, I, I've also I said beautiful for both art beautiful, and music. Beautiful, yeah. And that 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 really art, is something. I, I'm just saying, like as a general sense, art art is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, art in all of its many wondrous forms is really something to just be curious about and to, you know you want to have a desire to expand the horizons of what art can be and what people can learn from different forms of art and uh, from different pieces of art and uh, that's something I'm exploring because I do many different things that constitute as art in my opinion even this podcast is my art you know just just because I can frame it that way and art being as inherently subjective as it is, um, anything can be art. And uh, John yeah. Cage's attitude, the composer John Cage, his attitude was that anything can be music. And that's something I wa that I like. That's an idea that I really want to explore within my music. I always think, like, experimental music is always fun. Oh, yeah. That's why I like doing music, is because I want to do something that I haven't done before. And yeah. I think that's what every artist should, should should at least, you know, strive for in the end. Money's cool, and being famous takes its toll on you, sure, but, it you know, it's cool to be recognized. Mm. Excuse me. But, you know, you, you want to leave your imprint on this world and I feel like the greatest insult to be to your art is to be recognized as generic or that your art is kind of just like someone else's and um, you know the original art the art that is the most original lives forever and that's why you know the Beatles Jimi Hendrix and, uh, you know, the, the old, um, golden age of hip hop rappers and, uh, people like the Sex Pistols and the Clash, those people are kind of, um, idolized, um, and, you know, they're not idols and they're surely not legends, they're people, but they've really made great art, um, that is original to what it served at the time that it was made and uh, how it influences um, art to come after, to succeed. It... Well said. Mm -hmm. 
Well, being that I'm an artist, I feel like I can come to that conclusion, you know. And I'm fortunate enough yeah. to be to be able to verbalize it in that way, you know. I don't think it's profound to say anything like that about art because I'm not, you know. I I don't think I'm making any new revelation here. I'm really just trying to yeah. to relay things that I've learned from other artists, but it is you know it's a fact that other artists influence me all the time you know and I think it's great to be influenced but you also have to find a balance between um, that and finding some avenue that hasn't been explored before or at least hasn't been explored often and finding a way to turn that into something that's uniquely you the artist yeah exactly I, I always think it's fun trying to like take my like inspirations from others and then just sort of try to do my own little twist on it mm -hmm. and uh, that will bring us to the next song which is Nothing Lost by Gup Semicolon now what can you say about Gup Semicolon as a person and uh, wh wh where and when did you first hear this song uh, so, Joza, Gup Semicolon, is a good friend of mine. Um, she, she's another Bliss Quarter. Um, so, the first demo of the song was actually made in one of Bliss Horde's weekly beat battles. Um, I believe the prompt was noise bass, um, and we had an hour to make a song, and after the hour we were doing a listening party where we were just listening through everyone's submissions and what they got done in that hour. Um... And then Joza played this, um, and it was like very impressive. It has it had like vocals and all, and everyone was just like, "You need to release this. This is so good." Um, so she finished it up and then uh, released it. And I think this is like her first release in two years, or one of, or was her first release in two years. She has since released stuff after the fact. All right, let's hear the song now.
that was Nothing Lost by Gup Semicolon. Nothing Lost by Gup Semicolon. And, um, yeah, you know, she's a good friend of mine as well. Um, I, I think we, um, kind of, uh, I mean, we kind of got introduced to each other once I did that Sleepy Zone set, do you remember? Back in February. And Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny, um, according to Quinny, and I, I don't really check on Sleepy Zone that often anymore, but, you know, um, according to Quinny, um, they don't do two-hour sets anymore, so I, I'm kind of happy to have it while while kind of happy to have that privilege to have done one while it was there you know yeah you're like one of the last few i think there was like maybe one other person that had a two-hour set um after you did mm -hmm. uh because like there was a there was at a point where you had to start doubling up days because there were so many sets so there'd be like two people on one day so that already caused like a limit and then after that they also like lowered the amount of days that Sleepy Zone will be live a week. So uh, the decision was made to cap it at two, so that way, or cap it at one hour, so that way two sets can be played, like, during a one night guaranteed. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's understandable. I mean, you know, Bl Blissa must feel, like, overworked having done all that for four weekdays. Right? Yeah, definitely. So... Yeah. You know. But, um... Yeah, good song. Um... What, what, what are, what are your hobbies besides music, you know? Mm, that's a good question. Um... I, I'm a big Pokemon fan. I like, uh, playing Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, I like city builder games like uh, City Skylines, and I I've been uh, really getting into a train builder game recently. Do you know about Sim City? Called Nimby Rails. Uh, I've never played it personally, but yeah, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. I I also love Pokemon a lot. Um, you know. Um, more so the older games, though I really enjoy Pokemon Emerald a version, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. And I uh, think I would say my favorite game is HeartGold SoulSilver. That's my favorite, like, mm -hmm. game games from the series. Which one? HeartGold or SoulSilver? You have to pick one. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Fence Rider. <laughs> Now, now this is just the question of do I like ho -Oh or Lugia more? Uh, I think I like HeartGold more. Yeah. I, I've i only ever played, you know, the original Pokemon Gold. But, yeah, it's... it's Pokemon is such a nostalgic game for me. I, I remember forming a lot of yeah. memories with with Pokemon, you know. Definitely, yeah. Mm. And, uh... Yeah, what, what's your favorite uh, starter from HeartGold? I really, I'm a big Cyndaquil fan. I've always been a big Cyndaquil fan. Cyndaquil is my, is my homie, for real. <laughs> yeah. I kind of think the fire Pokemon, the fire starters, I mean, you know, Gary's always going to come out and just pick the water starter and then immediately battle you and you'll be immediately weaker, so that's always frustrating. And then, of course, if you pick the water starter, then he's going to pick the grass starter, and if, he picks the gra if you pick the grass starter, he's going to pick the fire start. You know, I... That is something I... But I usually end up picking the the water starter because um, the water Pokemon are not um, weak to grass. Um, 
as opposed to electric Pokemon. But grass are weak to fire, and fire are weak to water. I I, I used to really like the um. Uh, something I've missed with the new Pokemon games is how now the instead of picking your weakness, uh, the rival your rival now picks the Pokemon that's weak to you, and it makes it a lot less challenging and less fun as a result. Yeah, I I liked that element of spite in Gary in the first few games. I don't I've, I haven't played the new ones, but um, from what I hear, they're not as brilliant as when the first ones came out in the 90s i think from my memory i, I could be wrong about uh, gen 6 with x and y but i, I believe from uh or i no i think it started with a uh, fuck aloha gen 7 where the rival started picking your weakness mm -hmm. and from there it just kind of becomes like well damn now my right the end of the game rival fight is just gonna be I click the button and I win. I clicked I clicked the opposite move. Uh, I clicked the main move of my starter Pokemon and I just win the fight. Mm. Like it makes it a lot less like stressful. Yeah. But in a bad way. Yeah, what video game consoles do you have? I, I have my pewter, uh, and I have my PlayStation that I don't use, like, at all anymore. So I need to get, start doing that again. Which which PlayStation? Is it PS1? It's the 4. Oh, nice. You got the I used to play it a lot back in the day, but mm -hmm. I, I have since not. I, I do have a PS2, which... Um, uh, now collects dust under a CD player that is broken and I need a new one and a couple VHS tapes and DVDs that I still need to watch um, and I do also have a Wii that I will okay uh, play like maybe once a year <laughs> yeah I have a Wii that is also collecting dust um, unfortunately I need to get new Wii motes so that I can, you know, play the Wii again. And I don't even know if this Wii still works. I also have a GameCube that needs a, a, a laser replaced. I also have a Nintendo Entertainment System that needs a completely new... I, I have a Switch as set. well. Yeah. And I, yeah. I have a... Well, we have a Nintendo 64, but it's technically not mine. And uh, long story, I won't bother you with it. And... Uh, I have a 3DS that is collecting dust now. Um, so um, I also have a 3DS. I I still on occasion will play my 3DS. I, I modded it recently, and that's I been giving me a lot of fun. Too. I modded mine too, but I made the mistake of updating to, like, what is it, 11.17 and not knowing or yeah. something. There's been, I think it was, like, the most recent update just completely fucked, like, yeah. most homebrew shit, and I have been avoiding the update as much as possible. Well, you know, you are, you were lucky because you had the foresight. Um, I didn't mod mine immediately, but, um, one, you know, I remember once the eShop closed, I was, I saw that Paper Dawn video that came out. Once again, it goes back to him. And, you know, he, he, he was like, just mod your 3DS, you know? And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll drag this poor thing out. I haven't used it in three years until that point. And so, you know, once I did, um, I had to find the exploit that not a lot of people use. It's like this kind of off the beaten path kind of thing where... Um, I was fortunate enough to have Pokemon Picross already on my 3DS. I downloaded it years ago when it was on the eShop. Of course, now the eShop's dead. But um, it was on the eShop, and uh, I never played it. Um, so I, I said, okay, well, that's perfect. You know, I don't ever foresee myself playing Pokemon Picross anytime soon. So, And it's a free app anyways. So basically... You put a bunch of things on your SD card. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just basically 
going through what I yeah. did. You put a, you put a bunch of files on the SD card. Um, in the folder that contains Pokemon Picross, you delete the files and replace them with dummy files that look exactly the same. And then you go on your 3DS, open up Pokemon Picross, but instead of going to Pokemon Picross, all those files are gone now. So you basically get taken to the homebrew channel. And um, it's great, you know? Um, you know, I I downloaded some cool demos. Um like really cool 3d looking stuff that can really um showcase the capabilities of the 3ds which are criminally underused um yeah so so yeah that 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 way of doing it seemed a lot more like simpler than the way i modded mine like the way I did it, like, involved me, like, doing shit with, like, Wi-Fi settings, and a certain Wi-Fi setting, like, mm. is set to, like, fucking open up a homebrew menu, and then you, like, have to, from there, run a certain file that you have saved on a different folder, and it, it was just, a, like, a very tedious method, but it ended up working. Quinny, what number comes between 1,617 and 1,619? 1,618. Correct. Alright, let's get the next song. Um, this yeah! Next, this next song is going to be Doctor's Note by Micah Kalari, featuring Vi5000. Um, now, um, if you could basically tell me where you first heard this song and a bit about Micah as a person. Yeah, so I believe uh, the song is the first song off of uh, Micah's most recent project. Um, or, or first single off the uh, project. Uh, I will... You will? What's the album called, Quinny? Uh, the album is I Will Get My Act Together. Thank you. Um, and, to coax and this is like you. the one of two. Things. Yeah. Um, but this is I will get my act together. Uh, this was an album Micah has been hyping for up for a while. Um, and this was the first single off it and got me very excited for it. Um, I like a lot of Micah's music and I was very excited to see another project by them. Um, Micah is another friend of mine, uh, another fellow Blisscord community member. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Quinny and I actually listened to this album together, so I have heard this song, and Quinny knows that I've heard this song, um, but I didn't hear it as a single, I heard it on the album, and um, like the day after it came out, I think, no, the evening, but I yeah, wasn't I, think it, I wasn't there I think when it was, the midnight yeah. release, but it was the day of its release. Um, yeah. I still have the logs, actually, so I can see exactly when, yeah. Um, July 21st. Yeah, I played Narrow Stairs by Death Cab for Cutie and then said, okay, what what do you have for me? And then you said, well, this is... <laughs> this is what just came out, and I really like it. So, and I enjoy the album, too. I enjoyed it when we heard it, so... Um, so, let's hear it. Doctor's Note. Doctor told me I can't run anymore, so I scream. Walk away from the lunch table where all of the creeps talk. Something about your posture makes it kinda awkward. But I keep my head held high no matter what. Makes them think how I feel is a lie. Not worth changing their ways. Wonder why I said that the stage made me feel dizzy. I guess they assumed I was pretty excited. Sing my silly songs for the choir I put up a fight and they still require me to sing 
And that was Doctor's Note by Micah Clary featuring Vi5000. Oh, is that how you pronounce his name? I, I've been pronouncing it wrong for almost six months. <laughs> um, oh, no. But... To be fair, I could also be pronouncing it wrong and just not know, so... Well, don't you know him? I do. Uh, okay. But I'm, I be- I'm saying the way I believe it's pronounced. Right. Yeah. Well... <coughs> Sorry, but yeah, um, is there anything you want to talk about? Fuck. Uh, music is pretty cool. Besides that, we already <laughs> established my opinion. that. Yeah, we've, we've established that music is pretty cool. Um, well, I guess on the subject of music, I, I have been, uh, doing a lot with a, with a, I don't know what to call it. I don't know whether to call it a band, a collective. Uh, I think collect- uh, collective is more the right word. Um, but with the start of a... Uh, it, so it started... Well, the name of it is Goblin Gang. We have three songs out right now. Um, oh, and all of them have been too? like... Uh, th- this is... Tay is also in the project, but there's like, I think, ten others. Um, uh, so it started with All Nighter, not All Nighter, that's another event, um, Slumber Party's event, which I am forgetting the name of, uh, what the fuck is it called? Um, uh, the fuck, uh, something Bash, why am I forgetting the name? Gay Bash. I need to fact bash, check this. Bash. Weekend bash. Weekend okay. bash. Okay. So basically, you have a weekend to make a song. Um, so there was that. I don't remember whether or not I participated. I don't think I did because I didn't really hear about the event until after it had already ended. But after the event ended, um, there was a, an immediate immediately after it, there was a follow-up event where you had to make a song that was Goblin-related. Um, and I had asked Tay um, if they wanted to make a song together. And then everyone else sort of was like, ooh, yeah, that sounds fun. And then it sort of became a joke of like, oh, yeah, let's do a Goblin Cypher. Um, but that eventually turned into, like, we had a set amount of people that were, like, in the project. Um, and we were like, oh, yeah, let's do, like, an epic rap battle sort of thing. So we did that. Um, I believe it was uh, Milo Dog Guy, uh, a.k.a. Snoop Gob, um, TXM. Uh, Minty Mints, uh, myself, oh, uh, May, nice. yeah, Minty is, uh, Alex, uh, Coraline, um, I don't remember whether I said May Whitefish, uh, Solar Stardust, and DJ, uh, DJ Dubious, aka Apathros, um, and that was the original lineup, uh, we have since added more members, but I'll get into that in a bit. So, we, we made a song in, for that Goblin Bash, uh, and it was pretty well, it was pretty well received. Um, we've since put that one up on Spotify, so that's, like, my first, like, it, it, I think that's my second Spotify release on my profile, so that's always cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, we were like, oh yeah, let's make an album, let's make an album, and then we just never did anything with that. And then, Flash, like... A few months forward, honestly. Maybe even, like, two. Um, uh, and there's another weekend bash. And we think, you know what? Let's bring it back. Let's bring Goblin Game back. We're making another song. So we proceeded to do that. Uh, without really, like, saying that Goblin Gang was doing it. We just kind of wanted it to be a surprise. Um, so we made, I think it was, like, a seven and a half minute song. Um, and... We submitted it, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, this one was surfing themed. Uh, it, it was very much a beach episode, and that's that's uh, the name. Let me pull up the full name. Actually, uh, it's a long one. Uh, doo, doo, doo. The full name was beach episode. Damn, that's an awfully big wave. Sure hope I don't get hurt. Um, and we have since adopted that into the Goblin, the Goblin Gang, uh, title, uh, title, what's the word? Title theme, uh, with just ultra long names. 
because the first song was uh, Epic Rap Battles of Goblistery, Snoop Gob versus Evil Goblin. Uh, and we've been writing lore for Evil Goblin especially, which brings me to the third song that we've made, which is also for a Weekend Bash type thing called Wizard Bash, where they immediately announced it immediately after. But this one was the guise of complete secrecy, where we did not, where we like hid it, we hid the name, making it not Goblin Gang related. We submitted all their a, alias artist name, which was Mage Sauce. Um, to just fool the mods, because our song, our previous song, for Weekend Bash, had caused some rule changes, uh, mainly, you can't make songs over six minutes, um, and also, like, I believe it was mainly a joke, but the mods were, like, sort of pissed at us, so we were like, yeah, let's do it again, and just, like, surprise them, because that'll be funny, mm. so we made a song that is exactly six minutes long, that was mainly on accident, we wanted to have a long, uh, like, a song that got close, but we were mainly expen like expecting to add like a reverb trail to get that long, but like we were like constantly pushing like the six minute mark, but we hit it like perfectly. Um, we brought in a few new members, and uh, it was overall like I've, it's been a very fun experience. We plan on doing a full album. We plan on making radio like radio versions with that's not as long and like as filled with lore. Um, and it's much more like the catchy fast, like the catchy parts and less like narration parts. Um, but yeah, we've also planned on doing like a full experience album with like 20 minute songs just explaining the lore. So I'm very excited for that to get done if that ends up getting done, but we'll see. Oh, nice. I like how conceptual that sounds. It's, it's like been a lot of fun to make so far. Um, we have a lot of lore. Uh, like the first song it's it was the first song was made less in with lore in mind but there is still some more peeking out like how mm -hmm. there's a rivalry between evil goblin one of the characters and snoop gob um and in the beach episode one there's a lot of lore in that where at, there's like a storm coming and then uh evil goblin tay's character like uh ends up like getting sucked into the water um and the, uh, that one's not really resolved in that song, but in the next song, that gets resolved. Um, where we find Evil Goblin washed up on a beach. Um, we bring them to a wizard who instead curses Evil Goblin. And then we the, the Goblin gang goes back and trains and then comes back with three goblins in a, tra in a mage coat. Um, and fights them in a rap battle. And then unbreaks the curse from Evil Goblin and sets them free. That sounds so cool. Uh, I can't wait to hear an album like that. Um, the this, this story sounding cohesive and, you know. Apologies for that. We have thunderstorms. Yeah, damn. <laughs> and snakes and uh, rats and bats and birds in the building. Anyways. Um, yeah, I live in a farm. Anyways, um, let's move on to... <laughs> the next song which is gonna be dumbest girl alive by 100 gex and i'm assuming you don't know dylan or laura um as people but no i do not <laughs> um uh what can you say about the first time you heard this so this is the opener for um 100 gex's most recent album uh, 10,000 gex um i first heard this the night it came out um, I remember, like, making, like, debating between whether I wanted to do the, listen to the full thing tomorrow or listen to it right as it came out, or, like, only listen to part of it, because I, like, I was exhausted and needed to sleep, because I had to get up early the next morning, and I decided, I, I started playing this song, I got through it, and I was like, I'm gonna save the rest for tomorrow. So, this was, like, the first song that I heard, and really only one I heard that, that, like, midnight release anyway. Um... But it was, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I heard the song performed live. This was the first song that they played when uh, they came out. Um, they started with the uh, uh, thanks or THX, whatever it's called, like build up, and then right at the drop, they came out from behind stage and started the show. So that was really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of listening to um you know the bliss chord people and all the all their songs you kind of wonder how they're not 
as famous as a 100 Gex or a, or a Sophie. You Almost know, definitely. Because like, it's like, you know, it's it's filling that same niche, you know, it's filling that same kind of hole, you know, that a 10 track album as as terse as it is and as, you know, short as it is, it's it's also, you know, a bit like, you know, you wish there was 11 or 12 a bit. But I like a thousand gex, and I, I for one heard it, um, the day it came out officially. Of course, there was someone on Blizzcord who posted it onto like their own kind of piratey website, where it was I supposedly posted in Australia, where it, it came out there because they they have it a full day ahead of us or something. So. Time zones and shit. Yeah, so, um, that sucks, but, you know, I got to hear it officially on YouTube, and, uh, we're gonna listen to the song now, Dumbest Girl Alive. Do you feel like you're the dumbest girl alive, Quinn? Um, maybe a little bit. Well, let's find out. <laughs> yeah. Live by 100 X. Yeah. Um, I I was I was looking at, um, because I was thinking about, um, things you could use for drums, and uh, the ones that I use, um, are, well I I have three, um, free VSTs. Try saying that three times fast. That I that I use for drums, and they are. Um, Moto Drum from IK Multimedia, um, MK Power Drum Kit, and uh, Labs 3 by Spitfire Audio. So you probably want to look into those if you want more drum sounds. <laughs> um, Most definitely. I, I mainly are relying on sample packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, if, if you're lazy, I could just create one. <laughs> but I mean, you know... Um, I always think there's something satisfying about, like, creating a, a good drum pattern, so oh, I, yeah. I definitely need to look into more drum VSTs and just other VAT VSTs in general. And, and Music Radar is also a good website for uh, packs like that, sample packs and loops and 
just a big library of zip files of all kinds of stuff like drum loops and um, instrument loops you know really cool stuff and you know but nothing beats learning how to play real drums really I love playing the drums and uh... I used to do drum lessons when I was a kid um, we, we used to have a drum set uh, when I was little, so I was like, oh yeah, I want to do the drums, but I think I stuck with them for, like, maybe two years, and my instructor that I had, like, did not move past, like, the fucking, I'm forgetting the name of it, like, I think I only had kicks, hi-hats, and then, like, one drum, and I, was, and I got very frustrated because I wanted to do more than that, mm -hmm. um, so I ended up dropping it for that reason, and I wish I stuck with it, but it is what it is. My whole problem with music lessons, and I'm not saying this as a judgment or as any sort of thing against music teachers or tutors or anything. In fact, one of my friends is a music teacher, so, um, but, you know, and I've had music lessons, so I should be on the side of it, but I kind of think that everyone learns at their own pace, and you can't really force yeah. someone to, you know, to play with... I mean, in your case, one or two drums, or even one, two, three, a few drums, and then add more once they've mastered the first three, because that's not a good way to learn a drum kit. If you want to learn to play a drum kit, you have to learn how to play every drum on it, like the the, the kick drum, the hi-hat, the cymbals, the toms, and the snare, and, uh, you know, anything else you may want to tack on is like a percussion instrument, like a tambourine or a cowbell or something. But you'll want to learn on a, on a kit, you know? And Yeah. You know, I practice on the kit, you know? I don't have to, you know... Like, you know, practice your rudiments and practice the etudes and practice that stuff because it's useful to know um, the paradiddle and the five-stroke roll and stuff like that. But, you know... Um, And I know that stuff because I was in band in middle school as a percussionist. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, what is your favorite instrument anyways? Um, I, I, I think either the guitar or piano. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'd more so say the guitar as like a favorite instrument. Uh, and I would really like to learn it. It seems like a lot of fun. Um yeah yeah i i like playing the guitar um i i think i've basically explored every avenue i possibly could out of the guitar that is until i start getting more you know until i start getting pedals and you know exploring different ways of how a guitar can sound but you know as it stands i think uh i'm I'm trying to get more into the saxophone, and I'm trying to practice that more, and, um, you know, I'm, I still very much love playing the keyboard, I have a MIDI keyboard, and of course you can never get tired with that, because, you know, I mean, that basically controls every other instrument in the, in the DAW, right, so, um, yeah, you know, I have a, a Nectar Impact LX49 Plus, so mm. that's the one that I got a week before Christmas 2019. Uh. Hell yeah. I I also did band in middle school. I uh, Not middle school, in elementary school. I played the trombone. Um, I think I dropped it after like the first year. But during that time, it was helpful. It allowed me to, like, understand what street, sh like, sheet music means mm -hmm. and, like, how to read it to some, some extent. So that is always helpful. It is very useful to learn how to uh, read, play from, and in some cases, write sheet music. Um, and I, I find myself, you know, because I, I'm good with playing by ear and also 
you know, I've had I've had years of experience, so I could basically do that. And I write my own songs, so I basically know what the melody is just from my head because I created it. But you know, if you're gonna give it to someone, you might as well like a like a clarinet player or a vocalist, for instance. In my case, you know, shut up. And then, <laughs> you know, that that's a good instance of when you'll want to. Um, you you know open up Muse score and um, just just start dotting away. You know I like I, I like doing the sheet music. I like transcribing. It's 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 uh, kind of uh, it kind of calms my nerves in a way. Um, yeah. And I know, I must definitely have lost the sheet music skill, but I at least understand some parts of it. Well, yeah, and it's not, it's not like, absolutely necessary to have to be able to know sheet music in yeah. order to play music. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but it is really useful, as I've said, and once again, if you want to give it to a player who, you know, is, is quite serious about one particular instrument, like a clarinet or a saxophone or a violin or, you know... It's definitely required if you're going to give it to orchestral musicians, like, like you know, or or if you're writing a symphony. I mean, obviously, then you'll want to be able to learn how to write sheet music, or know how to write sheet music. And but I I just I just never find myself having to, you know, really be able to to be required to know how to read sheet music just because the music yeah. that I'm doing the music that I'm doing now is my own and the only sheet music that I'm writing is what I'm giving to my vocalists and uh, my clarinet player re really so the people that people that ask for it <laughs> you know I I've also played recorder in fourth grade the, no, the so standard not. elementary school Give a bunch of kids a recorder and yeah. see what happens. Um, hot cross I, I enjoyed buns. that. I, hot cross buns. Hot cross I buns. Can master yeah. that on a recorder. <laughs> um, but I I did get pretty far in that. Uh, I didn't do it the next year because I just straight up didn't offer it. But mm. um, I remember they had like little strings that you would get tied around the end of your recorder based off like if you did a certain challenge. And I think for a while I was like on top of that, like, constantly getting new strings, and there was, like, at some point, something I couldn't play, and then from there, I just couldn't get past that one, so I just ended up not getting any more for the rest of the year. Yeah. I still have my original recorder from that point of time. Um, I still do as well. Yeah. And I've used it in a couple of my songs. Uh, there's one on OK Awesome called distracting myself from the danger next door which um not only has clair not only had nah, not only has recorder but also does feature clarinet playing of uh, my friend ali who is the music teacher that i mentioned and is the one that i give mm. a lot of sheet music to um you know she's great she's a really um amazing person i love working with her and i i think she's She's funny, she's smart, and she's really um, taught me a lot over the, f the few years that I've known her, really. Um, worked with her first in December 2020, actually, so it's been a while, you know? Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny how... how <laughs> how it works that way you you work with someone for quite a long time and you know they they just kind of become like a frequently collaborated with person yeah <laughs> and uh Yeah, I I I can play 
you know, guitar, piano, bass, drums, tambourine, uh, maracas, um, uh, let's see, mandolin, recorder, saxophone, um, still learning saxophone, but, you know, I think I'm all right, um, uh, and tin can, do you want to know how to play tin can? How does that work? Okay, so what you do is you, you get a tin can, right, and, uh, you empty out the contents, wash it out, dry it out, make sure it's sterile and whatever, and, um, there are three ways you can play the tin can. First of all, you can strike it anywhere. Um, that makes for a demented cowbell. And then the second way is they're, they're kind of, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, ribbed edges on the can. So you can, you can scrape those with, and you can basically use a pencil or a mallet. You can scrape those, um, and that becomes a demented guiro. And then the third way of playing the tin can is you stick the pencil in it and you you rattle it inside of the tin can very very fast so you become a demented southern mom uh calling for soups on in a way that's so, awesome that every single uh noise it makes is described as demented well it is you know i i invented it and i invented a demented instrument Hard. just out of something that I saw made a noise and uh, could could be used as a demented percussion instrument, you know? I don't think anyone else has used the tin can, especially on recording. I don't think anyone else has used the tin can um, in, 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 in like a legitimate way as an actual percussion instrument that sounds like a cowbell or a guiro or... Um, a muted triangle, you know? Yeah. That's hard, though. Uh, you know, as as I said, John Cage's whole attitude was that anything can be music. Um, so you really have to wonder what around you makes sounds. Um, how about, how about this glass, for instance? I just saw this and thought, okay, well, people do water xylophones. I wonder what this glass sounds like. Ding. Yeah. So, might use glass sometime. But, um. Yeah, that's, uh. I think it would be very interesting if. And certainly within the same kind of mindset of hyper pop experimentation especially if if you you all just kind of i don't know you could make it into an event or something find something find some household object that makes noise and make a song that features it you know and that would that, actually be a lot of fun yeah that could make for a compelling um listening experience and uh music recording experience because um it 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 really is a a less than often treaded path you know it's it's not it's not every day that someone comes along and says look at me i'm playing the tin can and uh and uh glass full of water i i have found that like i enjoy making the muse music what the fuck i enjoy making the music the most when i have like the most limitations that i have to work around like oh, yeah. there was recently a, a sleepy tapes uh a sleepy tapes split where you essentially had to make a song that had a split in the middle whether that like whether that be a key change or a bpm change um and i I had a lot of fun making that. I pushed off till the very end, but uh, I ended up having a lot of fun. Um, okay, it, it allowed me to like gotta, really think about like what I wanted to do with it. You gotta, you gotta start doing that to me, cause I'm like running out of ideas for things that I haven't done before. Like you, you know, you gotta just start giving me these kind of challenges for myself and my own music, really, that I can kind of apply yeah. and, you know. <laughs> 
And honestly, that's also like what I really enjoy about Goblin Gang is like it's it's a fun experiment. We get to just make shit about goblins, mm -hmm. and we usually will come up with like the genre of the song before like the first one, the epic rap battles of Goblistery. I don't know what the fuck you'd really call that genre. I think that's more much more like comedy rap. Uh, I don't want to say hyper pop. Uh, no, I guess I guess like vocally wise, um, but. It's like instrumentally, it's like dubstep and like hyper pop elements, mm -hmm. and it just came out like, it was very fun to make. And then the second one we made was surf metal trap, um, where I made a trap drums for that one. Um, May Whitefish did uh, the um, metal part, and then we found surf uh, surf samples online that were public domains. So we were like, yeah, uh, we have like a few hours left. Let's just go with it. Yeah. So. That that's that was the story behind that, oh, okay. and then the third one, uh, fucking, uh, we don't really have an official title for it, title for it yet. Uh, title for it yet. We have a very generic wizard title, which I believe is just hashtag wizard pack, um, which that will definitely not be staying. That was just to get it masked completely. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one is like. Much more hyper pop elements. There's there's a dubstep section at the end. Uh, there's like a jerk at the beginning. There's uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's 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 Blissom noise wall at some point. Oh, is Blissom involved? No, uh, no. We just got a tag from her from her for that one. Oh yeah. But May Whitefish made a, a noise wall, and it came out very well. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, once again, I'm really looking forward to that Goblin project, because I like how conceptual it sounds, and I like the ideas behind it. It really sounds like... <laughs> you know, it really sounds like a almost kind of hyper-pop opera, in a way. Yeah, like, I think we plan on doing some studio stuff for it, too, because in early October, there's going to be a big meetup, like, with a bunch of the members, uh, so we can all go to a concert together, oh. and it eventually, it first started out with just, like, a few local people being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to this concert, let's link up there, um, and it was just supposed to be, like, a one-night thing, and then, like, other people were like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I think I'll go, too, and that caused other people to be like, yeah, you know, I'll fly out, um, so now I think there's like four or five members of uh, Goblin Gang that are all going to be like together at the same time, myself included. And I think we plan on renting out a, a studio space for like a day and trying to get something done. Oh, nice. <laughs> could you by any chance film that? And you could do like an electronic press kit. You could do that. And that could be fun. That would go hard. You know, you could even do like a music video, or you could do a film about it. Yeah, we we plan on doing we plan on doing a music video. Um, mm -hmm. I think we I I don't really know like what the full plans are for like how we're gonna, like what songs we want to do. I don't know if we're just gonna do all the three ones that we have now, film for all of those. I don't know if we're only gonna do one, but it'll be fun, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to it. Probably gonna have to buy goblin masks. I don't know if we plan on doing that. Uh, I think. I, I know the only plan that we have is, have you seen that video of the cop going down a slide and then, like, shooting out? I, uh, am unfamiliar with the video. Let me see if I can find it while I describe it. But basically, it's this, like, metal, uh, uh, slide at, like, a playground. <laughs> the first thing that shows up, awesome. Uh, but it's essentially, like, a uh, children's slide, and a cop goes, like, down it, and they, like, go shooting out, like, very fast, uh, and, like, fucking, what the fuck, uh, and just, like, shoots out and, like, tumbles, and it's, it's been a, a very funny video, um, and that's in the city that we're all meeting up at, so that's definitely the plan. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll have to... They go there, probably record us going down it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Alright, I found, I found the video. Okay. 
Well, I probably won't watch it until after this uh, recording is done. But, you know. Um, so we're going to wrap this up now with the last song. The last song is going to be the one that will end this. So say your goodbyes once you've talked about... Um, uh, this this next song is uh, I have to pull up the full artist name to be proper hang on Sleepy Zone, Drama Trial, Gas Mask, I Heart Teps and St. Corinthian with Countdown and talk about this song a little where you first heard it and then we're going to have to say our goodbyes okay so this was um, a part of a Sleepy, uh, Sleepy Zone project uh, sleepy teams where you got paired randomly with five to six other people and your goal was to make a song in a week and like I genuinely had so much fun working on this um, this isn't my song that I did for it but I had a song with with others that was a lot of fun um, I did call the void with Alex uh, Quarrelin, Tef, uh, me, Cryptid, Nile, uh, Degu, and Gramlican. Um and that was a lot of fun. That was, like, a great experience to just try making, like, an actual serious song with others. And that was, like, the first time I've really done anything like that. So that, like, was a great learning experience. And this song is the first one on um, the album, which is called Right Here in This Moment. Uh, uh, I don't really... I'm not, like, super close with any of the, like, people actually on the song, with the exception of iHeart. Um, and we're, we're friends, I would say. Mm-hmm. But it's a really good song, and I, I really enjoy it. All right. Well, it's been fun knowing you all, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to end the podcast ever, but it's, just, <laughs> it's, been, it's been good talking to you once again, Quinny. And, um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we'll listen to this song, let it play us out, and goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye. Goodbye. G- g- goodbye. Don't touch me!